Okay, so this is part two of the video which we recorded before on the request of Dr. Arushi Chaudhary that what a newcomer or new joinee should know on the day one in the ICU. Then she left and now she is being posted in, in intensive care unit in her college and from there she had sent a request to us uh, that um, uh, some more things needs to be shown which we missed. Let's have a look what she wants to say. Evening, sir. Sir, the last video about first day in ICU was really helpful. It had some amazing and wonderful uh, insights about the ICU. Just some points that we had left uh, in that video, I have jotted it down and I have uh, forwarded it to you. So, sir, please would you be kind enough to uh, explain them? Thank you, sir. Okay, so I have noted down some of the points which she has sent to us and will try to uh, demonstrate whatever feasible to you all. Hope you all will like it. So the first thing which you missed was uh, arterial line. Arterial line, as we have discussed that previously there is a central line because if there is no cannula or no IVSS is available and we want to give certain medication, we use a central line. We have shown in the previous video. But what if, if the patient is hemodynamic and stable, means if the blood pressure is very low or if the blood pressure is high. Then your sphygmomanometer routine one do not help in this and the patient is anasarca also. So the blood pressure readings will are not reliable. In that case what we put, we put a cannula in the arterial line or in the femoral uh, arterial line, artery and then we record the uh, blood pressure on the monitor and from beat in that beat to beat blood pressure monitoring is shown on the monitor as a trace. So that cannula which we put in the radial line or the arterial line or the femoral uh, artery we call is arterial line. So there are different cannulas for uh, uh, radial assess and different cannulas for femoral assess. Uh, so this is one of those cannulas you can see this is very fine cannula. It is a little stiffer than your routine intracats and it has got a guide wire also. Now when we insert this cannula then we connect this another, this is PMO line this is a specialized circuit which gets connected to this and this gets connected you can see here there is a transducer and this gets connected to a cable like this and other part of this cable goes to the monitor. So this way one circuit is there. There is also a pressure bag to maintain a flush in the circuit. You can go and check on the net how an arterial line placement looks like. But the point is the arterial line is very very important tool in the ICU and it is always used to measure the blood pressure of any patient. Uh, it gives good readings, reliable readings in terms when patient is hypotensive or having a very high blood pressure like in neuro patient we need to monitor very strictly. So, do read more about it, arterial line, it is very very important tool, it is used as frequently as central line uh, in the ICU. So, so, there are different flush tests also to see whether it is damped or not. Now, suction ports, as you can see there are different ports beside the bed of the patient. This is oxygen port, this is flow meter which is there, so I can show you like this. This is your flow meters, oxygen flow meter is connected here or from there also the line goes to the ventilator. This is medical air where it comes and this is yellow one which you are showing is suction port and suction machine. So you need a vacuum suction to suck the secretion from endotracheal tube or oral um, secretions or anywhere with the cavity if we require that. So this is a vacuum suction from here you can adjust the pressure. Uh, like this you can adjust the pressure how much vacuum you need and there are two types of suction uh, catheter which we use one is this is soft suction you can see this is soft suction cannula if this can focus and here you can see this is a thumb thumb control like if i i keep my one thumb over this and i will uh, do the suction from here I can uh, what there is one more check from where I can adjust the pressure so this is soft suction usually used in endotracheal oral uh, secretion but if there are very thick secretions and uh, they are not able to uh, get suck because of this tiny lumen tiny lumen of this these are very tiny lumens you can see if I am able to appreciate I think it is there so there is a one more cannula which is a tighter one, uh, bigger one and 
this is called Yankov cannula. It is, this is, I am not sure if I can show you the, this you can appreciate, this is a, this suction catheter, this is a bigger suction, it gets connected into vacuum port and this is, it is called as Yankers cannula, Yanker suction, you can see here it is written. So Yankers is uh, very useful in where the secretions are too large in number or their secretions are very thick and not able, we are not able to suction, uh, do suction from the soft cannula. So these are vacuum section, very very important ports. Then we have tracheostomy tube also. Earlier we have shown you that we have this is endotracheal tube, endotracheal tube means it goes into the trachea and this is tracheostomy tube. Obviously tracheostomy tube will be shorter in size because it goes from a hole here into the trachea. So this is a tracheostomy tube. It comes in the same sizes as the endotracheal tube comes. All functions are same except for that there is an introducer. You can see the violet thing. This is an introducer and the size is small. So this is uh, uh, tracheostomy tube. Then you have very one very very important instrument which is, comes very handy is your Megill's forcer. You see, this is a blunt from here so that there is, there is no trauma. And this is useful in holding gauze. But most importantly in the ICU where it is used, when you want to insert nasogastric tube but it is getting rolled in the mouth, then with the help of larynscope you see in the mouth and then with the help of uh, uh, Megill's forcep you put uh, hold the uh, nasogastric tube and the, you slide it into the esophagus so it is used there also at times to hold the gauze and do the suction of the oral cavity or somewhere so to hold the gauze and uh, 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 means remove the clots put the nasogastrial tubes this is a very good instrument it is very very important and it should it should be available at your bedside it's come very handy now one more thing which uh, she has told is your stilets and bougies now i have told you that at times the endotrach this is endotracheal tube at times the endotracheal tube uh, is uh, when you try to intubate through endotracheal tube trachea is not very much visible or it is difficult to see visualize the trachea so you have two uh, things one is your bougie so you can see in the bougie this is hard plastic and the end this is the end which is a curved end it, it's a lifted end it goes into the trachea like this this is the end and then you slide this inside the trachea and after that you slide the endotracheal tube through this bougie into the trachea and you remove the uh, bougie so this is a very very good instrument one of my favorites to be used in the ICU this end remains like this when it goes into the trachea it, its position is like this so that it, uh, it becomes very easy to insert now if if by bougie if you also you are not in, uh, able to insert then you have stilet which go inside the endotracheal tube and it makes the endotracheal tube a little bit harder so it doesn't bend inside the neck so this is a metallic one metallic stilet it's obviously here is, is the blunt end and the other one is your soft stilet which is hard plastic sort of thing what you do is you uh, put the endotracheal uh, on this stilet you uh, lift uh, you bend the um, proximal end or distal end of the endotracheal tube so the angulation is maintained and it goes into the trachea so stilet and bougies i usually prefer uh, bougie for that matter but some prefer stilet whatever comes handy to you whatever you are comfortable you can use then you have your what you say is your uh, ICD insertion trocar. You can see this is trocar. Whenever a patient has pneumothorax, hemothorax, so this trocar. This, this is hard one, hard, and inside there is a stilet, and we push inside the uh, um, what you call is intercostal space with a guided pressure you go inside go inside and when it pressure is released you you slide the uh, tube and remove the stilet and once it is removed it is connected to seal it is connected to a seal bag uh, and one port is there for the air to be uh, removed and there is a water filled seal we make and this becomes an icd so this becomes an icd certain other instruments are there which are not mentioned but i will try to put images
one is your bedside USG machine which is there uh, to give you um, see pleural effusions, IVC, abdom abdominal collections like that. Also have a bedside ECG machine obviously by the name you understand it's used to take ECG. Then you have EVD extraventricular drainage in patients of hydrocephalus or uh, where there is obstruction due to intracranial bleed there is a hole in the brain it uh, the in, uh, external ventricular device drainage it's a sort of pipe it goes inside the ventricles and the drain is connected again like a sealed manner like this so extra ventricular drainage then you have etco monitor uh, on the endotracheal tube endotracheal tube there is a small etco to monitor which gets connected and it shows you the continuous reading on the monitor uh, of co2 you call it capnography there are three four uh, graphs uh, readings which you need to understand it gives you an idea whether pco2 is increasing or decreasing because it is very very important in uh, neuro patients it is your monitoring patient then you have temporary pacemaker i'll try to post an image temporary pacemakers what we call as tpi it is very very important usually in the cardiac unit where if there is a patient is a block or acute mi you put a temporary pacemaker to internal jugular or at times to the femoral so that it paces the rhythm by the time you correct the primary cause then i think there is a supra spc supra pubic catheter we have seen that foley's catheter is there but if at times the there is a stricture of foley's cannot be passed through the uh, above the pubical bone pubis uh, there is a, a, a through schellinger technique we insert an spc supra pubic catheter to empty the blood so these are the some of the few things which we missed in the last session and thank you arushi for again uh, sending the list so that we can demonstrate this to uh, members on the channel if anything is left you all can post in the comment and do give thanks to arushi for this thank you see you soon in the next video